women had uh, opportunities, but they were different opportunities. They were um, play dates, and uh, women wanted more. And my mother's 70, and um, she, most of the women her age, she got married when she was 19. Most of them, athletics was not um, something that was um, cool or important. They all, she dropped out of school to get married and was a housewife and a fairly good one. A woman's place is in the home. That's what they used to say in the 1950s. But the postcard life, that peace and prosperity, was shattered by the tumult of the 1960s. The civil rights movement, the war in Vietnam, the women's movement, and an awakening younger generation shook the foundation of American society. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 would have a dramatic impact on the country and the possibilities for African Americans. The women's movement galvanized behind the Equal Rights Amendment, but the ERA would not become part of the Constitution. On the other hand, Title IX would become law. The legislation's chief Senate sponsor, Birch Bay, called it an important first step in the effort to provide for the women of America something that is rightfully theirs, an equal chance to attend the schools of their choice, to develop the skills they want, and to apply those skills with the knowledge that they will have a fair chance to secure the jobs of their choice with equal pay for equal work. The Education Amendment of 1972 had an impact that has reached far beyond the playing field, changing forever the role of women in society and changing the society itself. Think about the astronauts and the engineers and the doctors and the lawyers and all the people that you know who are also happen to be female. Like Title IX has done tremendous things for this country. For me, it just opens doors, opens opportunities. It's given me a lot of opportunities, whether it be in sports or my education, going into the engineering field. Think about the dramatic impact it's had on the opportunities for women, uh, not just in athletics, uh, opportunities uh, for women to get into the fields that they want to get into, to go to college, to go to graduate school, to get a PhD, to get a doctorate. By 1975, regulations had been written. Also, there were lawsuits, lots of them. But girls and young women were getting opportunities. At Lowell Tech and Lowell State, there were and had been varsity teams. And at Lowell State, there were a couple of phys ed instructors. Claire Chamberlain and Denise Legault, who were the driving force behind women's athletics at Lowell State and later the University of Lowell. They brought passion, vision, and maybe most importantly, organization to what was suddenly a women's athletic program. The two co-founded five sports teams and helped to create the Massachusetts Association for Intercollegiate Athletics for Women, the state branch of the AIAW. You have to remember we were hired as teachers in the physical education program, so we had contact with students because physical education at the time was a requirement. So we bumped into all these students and started to talk it up, and we had also had, up until then, a reasonable intramural program. I had heard there was going to be a sports day, a volleyball sports day at one of the state colleges and I said well why don't we incorporate that into, that was the start of the volleyball program. In many cases I had to get permission from the parents, may the daughter please be out of the house for our 8 to 10 practice. The seats were sown, coaching staffs increased, facilities improved, and budgets grew. The Lowell State softball team was a perfect 16-0 in 1975, and the 1983 softball team went 22-7 and, and won the AIAW East Region Championship. In 1986, softball won the New England Collegiate Conference Championship and became the first women's team at the university to qualify for the newly established NCAA Women's Tournaments. In 1988, the university would have a national champion. Jane Servey won the high jump title at the NCAA Indoor Championship. Rowing, tennis, volleyball, field hockey, and basketball will also find success in the years that followed. When I think of Title IX, I think, yeah, you can achieve uh, your maximum potential regardless of whether you're a, a man or a woman. It's unfortunate that you have to make a federal law to make sure that there's opportunities for both genders out there 
But I guess looking back upon it, I'm, I'm glad that someone took the initiative. In 1972, 250,000 women and girls were involved in athletics. Now, 40 years later, that number has grown to more than 3.5 million. At UMass Lowell, there have been two team national championships, both of those coming in field hockey, and three individuals have grabbed national championship honors in track and field events. We note as well the 2012 U.S. Summer Olympic team consists of 530 athletes. There are 261 men, there are 269 women. I mean, without Title IX, I probably wouldn't be here right now. It gave girls an opportunity to do things that the guys are allowed to do that we can't. And it's good. <laughs> Gotta fight them as a woman, not a lady. Fight them as an engineer.